Hello aviators, welcome to my instrument rating video series. I'm Ty Jones, your error nerd, bringing you honest experience, reviews, training tips that will help you aviate, navigate, and communicate. Now, if you're new here, the purpose of this video series is to bring you free, in-depth instrument ground school training for you instrument pilots. This is the same exact training and instructions that I normally give to my students. And if you're one of my students that are watching, yes, you can use this as a review because this is literally the same exact instructions that I give in the same exact way. Um, and it has been proven to work. So without further ado, let's jump right into the training. Hello instrument pilots and welcome to the instrument ground school session number seven. Now in this one we're going to be talking about approach plates. How to brief the approach plates, what's the difference between a, a precision approach versus a non-precision approach. And we're also going to be talking about a little bit about the ILS since I didn't really talk about that in the last session. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now many of you know that I'm a huge fan of knowing where to find the information, not necessarily memorizing this stuff. Again, that will come naturally, but just know where to find this information. You can you can probably see I have the TPP up there and I also have one right here I'm in Florida so this is what I'm gonna have right here now if you look at the very beginning just like how the chart supplement is if you look at the very beginning as a legend of telling you exactly what every single thing is if you have any question without a doubt uh, what are you looking on the approach plates anything that you don't understand they're gonna have it nice and clearly laid out for you right in the beginning of the TPP. So I highly recommend you check this out before moving forward at all. Now when shooting an approach, it's kind of simple. There's two approaches. There's a precision and a non-precision. You're either going to follow a glide slope or there is no glide slope. And all you do is follow it. That's literally pretty much it. Now how the now how they manage to do that in the approach plate is they kind of combine both the precision and non-precision approach into one approach and into one little schematic here. So how do we read this? So just starting out, before we actually go to, the, to an approach plate, and I'll, and I'll show you how to brief this here shortly, but over here, you're always, so here's the, the runway is always going to be down here. This is literally the, the path of the airplane of your aircraft that's actually going to go. Now, if you can't see the runway at a certain distance, and you can find that 91-175, that's literally the heart and soul of the instrument when it comes to the missed approaches, MDAs and DAs and all that good stuff. But anyway, going back to here, let's say our altitude is at 2,000 feet. Now, we can't go above or below 2,000 feet, and that's represented by these lines right here. Now, if there was a line just below it that means we can't go any lower than 2,000 feet but we can go higher just think of these as little caps we can't go below these little lines right here so and so these right here are literally called step down fixes now if you're shooting a non-precision approach from here you will go from 2,000 once you have once you pass this nav point right here then you can step down to 1800 feet once you pass this next nav point then you have to step down to 700 feet once you pass this then you step down to your minimums or your mda and this is literally the how the non-precision uh this is how the non-precision uh approach works so you have your da which is precision altitude your precision altitude normally has a glide slope uh, remember we talked about that in the lat in the previous session. If you didn't uh, look at that one, I'll go ahead and put a link up there so you can actually check that one out too if, if you missed that one. Uh, but we're actually so for decision altitude, originally you're you're literally going from 2,000 and you're you're stepping down to 1,800 feet. Now you're gonna stay at 1,800 feet, and let me get my marker here. So you're going to stay. So we're at 2,000. Yay! We're flying. We're flying. We're flying. And we're gonna we're gonna step down to 800 feet. Now we're gonna level off your eight, uh, 1800 feet. Now this is after you're cleared for the approach. Normally they'll have you an approach will have you up at 2000 feet, 2500, and you're like, okay, well when do I start descending now? So even when you hear those magic words, Cessna, blah 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 blah, you are cleared for the ILS approach. You are cleared for our nav approach, whatever. As soon as you hear those magic words cleared, then you can start you know, flying the approach as polished. So I'm at 2,000 feet, I'm at 2,000 feet, it's normally like this. This is what it's really like. So you're at 2,000 feet, wondering, hey, when are they gonna clear me, when are they gonna clear me? Finally, you're cleared, and then you're gonna drop down to 1,800, and then you're gonna stop at 1,800 and level off there until you hit your uh, final approach fix. This is your Maltese cross. 
Now, if you have this little lightning bolt here, that this this was representing that you have a collide slope. So let's say we are shooting the precision approach today. Uh, the, the, the precision approach. So we're actually going to level off here. Now, once that glide slope is, is alive, then we just follow that glide slope all the way down to our decision altitude. As soon as we hit that decision altitude and we don't see, we don't have the runway in sight, then guess what we gotta do? We gotta go miss. And that's what this little line is representing. Now, if we have a MDA or we're shooting a non-precision approach and we can't really shoot this glide slope because precision or non-precision approaches do not have the glide slope, right? So we're gonna do the same thing. 2,000 feet, 2,000 feet, hey, Cessna, one, two, three, four, five, you are cleared for the LNAV approach. So in this case, then we step down to 1,800 feet until we hit this fix right here or this nav point and then we step down to our next one, which is 700 feet. This little star, this asterisk here, normally means for LNAV and LNAV only. Uh, but we'll go and we'll get into that when we go into the actual approach place here shortly. So we're going to step down here to 700 feet. We're going to level off here. We're going to stay at 700 feet until we hit the next nav point. And then normally right here, we we down here you have your minimums. So let's say our minimums is I don't know 500 feet. So we will step down at 500 feet, and then we'll stay there, stay there, stay there until we go until we're, uh, we're missed, uh, until, I'm sorry, until our missed approach point, and then that is when we go miss. Now some of you ask, well where is my missed approach point? How do I know when my missed approach point is? Now if it's a localizer approach, if you look in the corner, in the bottom corner, you're gonna see a little thing right here. It'll have, let's say, I don't know, let's say 90, 100, 129. Now these are going to be representing your air speeds after your final approach fix. So from your final approach fix to the missed approach point, you're going to have it, uh, you're going to have times right here. So let's say if I'm going 90 knots from here, it's going to take me, let's say a minute and 30 in order to get now. So, so once you're actually here at your final approach fix, you're going to start your timer. Hey, that's why we need clocks for our, um, our grab card, right? So you need your uh, clock. So as soon as you start your clock, once you go, once you're doing your step down fixes, make sure you stay at 90 knots if you're going to do this, right? It should be timed. So when you hit 130, a minute and 30 seconds, and you don't have the runway in sight, guess what? You're going to miss. That's your missed approach point. Now that's only for the localizers. That's for, for, for the time. Now for the RNAV approaches, you won't have it. This is you. Won't, you necessarily won't have that time. Why? Because you have a GPS. <laughs> you can just look on your screen and say, oh, "Okay, well, there's the runway. I should be right over the runway." That's what my GPS is saying. I'm looking outside. I don't see the runway. I don't have it in sight. Guess what? I'm going missed. So that's your missed approach point um, on the on the LNAV. So if you see this. That should give it away that okay this is probably a localizer approach if you don't have this then that that'll give it away to say that you are in a uh in, a, in an rnav approach a gps so that is the mda now remember mda you are going down to us to a certain point and you're leveling off until your misapproach point your da your decision altitude is you are following this glide slope all the way down until your certain altitude your decision altitude as soon as you hit that altitude and you don't have the runway in sight, guess what you're doing? You're going this. Okay, so that's normally what you'll see on the decision for precision and non-precision approach. And then you'll see another one at the bottom that says circling. What is circling or why do we do circling? Let's say our runway is right here going this way. Now circling approaches, if it's more than a three degree glide slope or if it's more than 30 degrees off of your, off, off of your alignment for your runway heading. Like for example, here's a runway heading niner right here. Now if I'm 30 degrees off, so if I'm, if I'm coming in, if the approach plate lines me up like this, and this is more than 30 degrees, more than 30 degrees, then it becomes a circling approach. So why in the world would we ever want to do that? Well, let's say that uh, normally your final approach fixes are normally like way out here, right? So here's your Maltese cross way out here and this is a top-down view so here's our runway right here and we normally fly out here we normally well here's our multis cross let me finish drawing the uh <laughs> the, the final approach fix here all right so there's our here, here we are so yes now we're going to start descending down descending down descending down to our runway and then if we don't see the runway then we go miss but normally if this is like normally like 10 miles out 
and I'm just using this as an as an example. Not all, not all uh, approaches are, are this far, and some of them could actually be further. But you're, you, it's really out here now. Let's say that we have a storm brewing out here. We got a bunch of storms and all kinds of crazy. That's a lightning bolt, by the way. Let me actually draw this a little bit better. We got a bunch of rain over here, rain. So we can't really shoot. We don't really want to fly this, but we're running, we're, we're running low on fuel. This is the only runway that, that's available. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a circling approach. So approach may guide us all the way over here. And then we're going to do a circling approach. Now we're going to go, we're going to keep flying toward the runway until we hit a certain radius, a certain circling radius. And we'll get into what that radius is and where that's where, where that radius is measured from is the approach end of the runway. So let's say our circling radius is 1.5, depending on what category we're in. So we're going to keep flying toward the runway until we're 1.5 and then make sure that we are at that altitude, that circling altitude and that we have the runway in sight and that we're in the correct distance, circling distance. If we are, if we have all three of those, then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, start our circle all the way around and then we're going to land on the runway so that if we do this then we can avoid this and that's one of the reasons why we do circling approaches okay so now we are back in sky vector and this is the low ifr chart if you missed that session i'll go ahead and put that link right up there so you can go ahead and grab that and uh, look at that if you need to so let's actually go to Daytona Beach right here. So look, let's look at the approach place. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to type in KDAB. So K D A B enter. And there we go. I'm going to click this little information. All right. So here is Daytona Beach, all the information. If we scroll right down here, we're going to look at both the, um, L, we're going to look at both of the localizer ILS. And we're also going to look at uh, the LNAV for the same runway. So let's use 7 left. And so we're going to go here to ILS localizer runway 7 left. We're going to click this. And this is going to bring up the approach plate. Now I'm going to zoom in here. And this is literally how I'm going to brief this. Now this part right here should look familiar. This is what we just went over on the dry erase board. Now up here, what I'm going to be going over is from top down and how I normally brief this approach. So up here we have um, what we're going to be shooting, um, either the ILS or the localizer. So when you're briefing this, you're going to brief either the ILS or you're going to be shooting the localizer. You're not going to brief it by saying, hey, I'm going to be, sh this is the ILS or localizer approach plate for blah, blah, blah. You're either going to say either ILS or localizer. So if you're shooting the ILS, you know you're going to be shooting a precision approach. So if we go down here. And just like how we mentioned in the board, so here is our altitudes right here. So at this fix, at Tiggy intersection, um, you're, you're at 1,600 feet. So you're literally going to come in here. You're going to level off. These little black little dashes right here, these represent runways. So you may want to maybe be wondering, okay, why is there a runway underneath Tiggy right here? Well, if you look right here, this is the uh, plan view. Uh, if you look right here, you see the land right there, and it's almost right underneath the approach uh, path right there, which is right where Tiki is at. So that's this is actually the land right there. Um, but we're not interested in landing at that runway. We're interested in landing at this one, and that's that runway right here, which is Daytona Beach. So if you're going to shoot a localizer, you're at 1,600 feet, and then you're going to hit the final approach fix with that Maltese cross, and look at that. It has that little lightning bolt, which means you have a glide path. So you're gonna, once you hit FOLIG, you're going to follow that glide path all the way down until your decision altitude. Your decision altitude is gonna be written right here. So 230 feet and you have 4,000 feet of RVR. Now what is that in statute miles? There is a RVR in statute miles conversion chart, but instead of going back and whipping out that chart, all you gotta do is read right over here in these parentheses. So this is actually converts it right for you. So 40, RVR 4000 feet RVR runway visual range is three quarters of a mile. So when you're listening to listening to the ATIS, if you don't have at least three quarters of a mile of visibility uh, and the ceilings are lower than 230 feet, well, guess what? You cannot shoot this approach. Now, notice these categories right here. It's got a category A, B, A, B, C, and D. These are your categories according to how fast your aircraft is. 
and we'll be, and we'll look at that in the in the TPP here shortly. But this is going to be your minimums for your ILS. This is your decision altitude. Now let's say we are shooting the localizer. What's it, what happens if uh, we listen to the uh, ATIS or we're looking at the NOTAMs and we find out that the that the glide slope is not active. So that means we're going to have to shoot a localizer approach. So localizer, we do the same exact thing, but just like how I mentioned, it's going to be step down fixes. So we're going to come at Tiggy, 1,600. Hey, we're clear for the localizer approach for seven left. Or as soon as we hit the final approach fix, then there's, since there's no glide slope, we're going to have to go from 1,600 feet and we're going to be, we're going to be stepping down to 680 feet. Now notice this little asterisk right there, as I mentioned before, this little asterisk means localizer only. How do I know that? Well, it says right there, asterisk means localizer only right there. Once we are at Zopri at 680 feet, then we do our spinal step down fix to our minimum altitude, which is 680 feet. Just a coincidence that this is actually the same as our step down fix at Zopri. Now, however, if we have dual VORs, we can identify Zopri with two, two VORs. Then down here is a little note right here. Two v dual VORs are, requir are re required. If we can, then we can actually set down to 380 feet. Now, two du dual VORs are required because one of the VORs is going to be uh, tuned to your ILS, which is... Uh, 109.7. You're going to plug this into your VOR, and that's how you're, how you're going to have that um, uh, the, that localizer. Uh, now, you'll need the second VOR to tune to Zopri. And how you're going to find Zopri? Well, the second VOR is going to be tuned to the Ormond Beach uh, or uh, the VOR, which is 112.6. And once that other VOR intercepts the 179 radial, which is right here. Uh, that's where you can identify Zopri. So if you have that capability, once at once you're at Zopri, you can actually step down to 380 feet for your minimums. Now you're gonna stay there until here's your times right down here. So once we hit full leg and we're shooting the localizer, you're gonna start your timer. Let's say you're going 90 knots. Normally one in 172s. As soon as you hit your final approach fix, you're gonna slow down to 90 knots. Flaps 10, and then you're gonna go all the way down at 90 knots. So as soon as you pass your final approach fix, start your timer, and then you're going to have at 90 knots, you're gonna fly all your step down fixes. Now once that timer reaches three minutes and 12 seconds, and you can't see the run the wheel, guess what you're doing? You're going missed. And what are you gonna do when you go missed? You're gonna follow these instructions right here. So you're gonna climb, maintain runway heading, you're gonna climb to 700 feet. Once you're at 700 feet, then you're gonna do a climbing right turn to 3,000 feet and you're going to turn to heading 175. You're going to join the uh, 033 radial from the Orlando uh, VOR and then you're going to hold over the New Smyrna intersection. Now we're going to go over holds in a, in a, a, in a future session. Okay, so a little bit more information from the top down. Uh, we have some other things. I'm not going to go really too much in depth because all of this information is already provided for you in the TPP, in the FAA uh, TPP guide, which I will definitely show you a link and I will also sh uh, show you exactly where you can find that. Okay, so this is the TPP guide I was telling you about uh, that was provided from the FAA. I kind of wish I had this when I was doing my instrument uh, training, but if you just Google uh, TPP FAA guide, this is what you're going to be uh, brought to. And I'll put a link to this in the description. Now I'm going to scroll down here. I'm just going to go through this really quick. Um, this goes over everything in the low IFR chart, and this it, and it goes over the uh, approach plate. So obviously we're not interested in the low IFR charts for this one. But this is breaks down everything. It's color coded. It breaks down every single thing. It is amazing. I uh, got the city and state right there. The uh, the approach landing number for the FAA. So you know if it's a FAA chart, if it says FAA here, you'll know that you're looking at a uh, Air Force chart or military chart because it'll say USAF on, on there. You can see how it go. It goes over everything. It goes, over here is talking about these numbers right up here. Oh, that's the Julian date right there. The 15 and 344. 
um, uh, all the stuff, the briefing strip, all of these things and this is one of the reasons why I'm not going to go over every single thing because as you can see this video would be a lot a lot longer uh, we will be going over this though so the trouble T and the trouble A um, we'll go over this in the next video when I talk about the uh, ODPs uh, obstacle, obstacle departure procedures because that will really relate to uh, to these um, even though general aviation does not have um, the takeoff minimums however if it does have trouble T's you should still be you should still look into this because that was that probably is going to be identifying obstacle departure procedures um, so that actually does apply to us but anyway moving on down here you, know, you can see all the fear routes and what all this means this is really really amazing information I'm so glad that they had this um, that the FAA actually put this put this together. DME arcs. It's one of my favorite approaches. I love doing DME arcs. It's it's pretty fun. I don't know. I like almost like every, almost everything about an instrument. It's really cool. I mean, it is a lot of information, but it's very rewarding when you have that rating because there's because that there's so much information. Um, but this is I highly recommend. Just go through this. Um, a few hundred times uh, I'm not even kidding because it is a lot of information you can't go through this just one time and just remember everything uh, so go through this a lot of times um, get get familiar with this um, use this as a guide and you'll you'll be fine uh, for the check ride again I'm not really gonna go too much into this because this is I'm gonna show you where you can find all this information it is really detailed and and I don't really want this video to be 40 50 minutes long but just understand all this can be found in that um, in that reference profile view so this is like literally this side view this is exactly the same as up here so up here you're looking at a top-down view right here this is the top down and this is the side view of the same exact thing so you can look at it out on all kinds of different angles over here you have the uh, the little airport diagram all the information you need is going to be right here and, and finally down here you have your your minimums down here so how do we brief this approach plate okay so real quick I'm gonna run through this this is how I normally brief all my approach plates whether it's RNAV localizer ILS doesn't matter they, they can all be briefed the same exact way so I'm gonna run through it really quick um, key thing here is to make it very very simple you don't necessarily have to brief every single thing on here just brief enough to know exactly where you're at where you're going uh, what your minimums are, what your misapproach instructions are, and at the end, if you have any questions, just ask if you have any questions. That's normally how you end uh, most of the briefs in general aviation anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and start out really quick. So today I'm going to be shooting the ILS 7 left into Daytona Beach, and the localizer frequency is going to be 109.7. Final approach course is 070. My frequencies are set and verified. Uh, this approach does require DME or radar required, but we're flying the G1000 today, so this satisfies both of those. And moving down here, the minimum uh, um, uh, correction, the my final approach fix is going to be uh, full leg at 1,600. My minimums are going to be 230 feet with three quarters statute mile visibility, and my missed approach instructions are going to be advised by ATC or as published. Any questions? Now, notice I didn't go over every single thing. I made it nice quick and simple okay same thing now I'm gonna be briefing the localizer okay so we're gonna be shooting the localizer into seven left today into the into Daytona Beach the localizer frequency is 109.7 final approach course is 070 frequencies are set and verified we have a uh, we with DME or radar is required which we do have that on our aircraft our final approach fix is going to be folic at 1600 step fix is going to be from their Zopri and since we do have dual VORs our minimums are going to be 380 feet our misapproach instructions are going to be advised by ATC or as published any questions okay well uh, what's the visibility there uh, okay well visibility is going to be three quarters statute mile of visibility okay well uh, how many how much runway length uh, do we have uh, available we go back up, up here and then we so you see what I'm doing any kind of questions they may have this is where you can actually go back and, uh, and answer these questions as long as you can find this information on here you'll be fine but as far as briefing it just keep it very nice and simple okay so now I'm gonna brief the RNAV approach in the same runway seven left so here we go 
Okay, so I'm shooting the RNAV into 7 left today and to Daytona Beach. Uh, my final approach course is going to be 070. Uh, moving on down here, frequencies are set and verified. Uh, my final approach fix is going to be Folic at 1,600 feet. My minimums for my LPV approach today, since I'm, since I'm shooting at LPV, is going to be 230 feet, 3 quarters statute miles visibility. Missile approach instructions is going to be advised by ETC or as published. Now let's say I'm going to be shooting the LNAV, same exact thing again. I'm shooting the I'm shooting the um, the RNAV into and and then for RNAV just keep it simple. If you're shooting an LPV, you can just say RNAV. If you're shooting the LNAV, you can still say RNAV uh, up here since that's what it says up here. So all right, so I'm shooting the RNAV into seven left into Daytona Beach today. My final approach course is going to be zero seven zero. Frequencies are set and verified in the frequency there. My uh, final approach fix is going to be full at 1600 and my minimums for the LNAV today is going to be 420 feet, 3 quarters statute miles visibility, missile approach instructions are going to be advised by ATC or as published. Uh, so that's how to brief the uh, a RNAV approach. Now let's go into circling. Okay so I want to do a circle and just like I mentioned on the board I want to, uh, the, the winds are favoring runway uh, 1 6. Okay, so we can't really shoot the approach for 1-6 because there's a big old storm over here. So we have to do a circling approach. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to line up here. We're going to shoot the approach just like we normally would. But when we get, so when we hit full leg at 1600 feet, we're going to step down, thick. we're going to step down, step down, step down. Whether if we have a, if we're going to follow the glide slope or we're going to do step down fixes. It's the same exact thing. However, instead of going down to 230 feet or 420 feet or shooting the LNAV, we're actually going to step down to 540 feet after the final approach fix. We're going to step down where, let's say we're doing the glide slope. So after full leg, 600 feet, follow the glide slope all the way down until you reach 540 feet. Now, once you're at 540 feet, in order to shoot this this circling approach, you do have to have one mile visibility. That's why it has one mile there. So when we listen to the ATIS, we do have at least one mile visibility. That means we can actually shoot the circling approach. Now, once we are 540 feet, we're, co we're coming down here. We're going to level off at 540 feet, and we're going to stay there until we are within our circling. We have this negative C here, which means if we are in category A, which we normally are, it's still going to be 1.3 miles from the approach end of the runway. So once we're in within that radius, and we can ha we have run runway one runway one six in sight, then that's when we break off of this. That's when we break off of of our approach course of 070 and we're going to fly a circling we're going to fly all the way on here i don't know if you can follow my mouse here and then let me let me zoom in here so we're, we're going to break off and then we're going to come around here circle all the way around for runway six and then we're going to land on runway one six and again we're doing that because there is possibly a storm brewing over here and we can't shoot the approach from coming way over here from Flagler and flying over Ormond. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we brief the, that's one of the reasons why we do the circling approaches. Okay, here's another approach plate that you probably will see very often in the check rides or stage checks if you're doing this on 141. Because um, this one is a little bit different than your average approach plate. Like for example, you don't see any kind of LPV or ILS or nothing over here, LNAV, nothing. It's just circling. And they may ask, okay, so why is it just a circling approach? Well, then look at this angle right here. Remember what I was saying earlier that if it's a little bit more than, if it's a lot more than your average three degree glide slope, well, there's, you're literally, that's more than three degrees. So even though it's not 30 degrees off the approach, uh, off the runway center line, uh, line up with the runway. It's it's still a circling approach, and that's the reason why right there. Um, now there's a, there's there's a lot going on here, so it is in a mountainous area, so that's probably why you have to dive down after the final approach fix, which is which is uh, doipy, I guess that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure, but you're at 11. 1,700 feet and then you're diving down to your minimums which is 9,840 uh, feet 
and then you have your elevation at 7,000 feet. So you're you're diving down a, a pretty good ways there, which is another reason why uh, it's a circling approach. Now, the mist is even more interesting because when you do go mist, you're actually being, you're tuning to another VOR, which is on a back course. So a back course is literally when, under normally, when your CDI drifts to the right, that means you're drifting left, of course, so you correct to the right. And the back course, that's actually reversed. And that's why it's very important to uh, to understand that. And it also says back course too. Also, it's shaded on the opposite side. Normally, if it's shaded on the right as you're going toward the runway, that means you're it's you're, it's not a back course. But if it's shaded on the opposite end, then it then that means it is a back course, which it is right here. Now you do need a, a couple of VORs, obviously, because how else are you going to identify this fix right here? Right? You need two VORs, and that's why it says up here dual VHF navigation receivers required so um, this is another one let's say they may throw a scenario at you saying okay cool well we are at um, let's say it's at 11 o'clock at night and you're seeing this approach and your um, your navigation light goes out you know what do you do well first of all you shouldn't be flying at night uh, without working navigation lights anyway and secondly you can't really fly this procedure at night anyway because look right up here procedures this procedure is not available at night so be so pay particular attention to all these small little flying print because they will bite you now when you're briefing the approach like I was saying earlier um, it's not necessary you don't have to really necessarily brief every single thing just get to the most important nitty-gritty thing so I'll brief this really quick so I'm shooting the localizer into Aspen today uh, my my um, VOR frequency is going to be one, my my correction my uh, localizer frequency is going to be 111.15 my final approach course is going to be 151 uh, we have we do require dual VOR receivers which we have equipped in our aircraft um, any other notes anything in here uh, procedure is not available for arrivals um, on the DBL VOR which we're not going to be doing so we don't have to worry about that today our uh, the final approach fix is going to be DOIPI at 11,700 feet and the minimums today is going to be the circling minimums which is 9,840 feet which we need three miles visibility which we listen to the ATIS we do have that today our misapproach instructions are going to be advised by ATC or as published any questions um, as you can see it's the same um, method I use to brief all my approach places and lastly here's uh, one is another crazy one so hi ILS or localized what in the world is this runway 15 into cold bay uh, so this is localizer 10.3 my final approach course is going to be 146 frequencies are set and verified my final approach fix is going to be uh, Jigno at 1800 feet my minimums are going to be 460 feet and misapproach instructions are going to be advised by ATC or as published done Again, using the same, it doesn't matter what approach plate that you're using, uh, you can literally use the same thing. But let's look at this a little bit more in depth. Look, look at this. So we got a localizer, we got a circling. Um, wow. Right up here, you're at flight level 20,000 feet, and then you're diving down to 460 feet if you're doing the ILS what kind of approach look at that that's just diving down to, so you got to go from 20,000 feet you're diving down to 3,000 from from one fix to the, to the next that is insane do you really think a civilian aircraft would be able to shoot this approach hmm I don't think so and that's why we have USAF so remember what I was saying earlier the AL and you have FAA right here. Well, this is not an FAA chart. This is actually a military chart. Uh, so look out for that too. Now this, you may not see this in check or anything like that. I just I just randomly found this and I just wanted to show it to you guys. All right, lastly I'll do, I'll close this out by going to Atlanta, the busiest airport in the world. Let's see, oh my, there's, look at all of this. This is, ins I'm just gonna pick a random one. Uh, I'll pick this one. I don't really, no, I'll just pick this one. Okay, cool. So here we go. <laughs> Put myself out in the spot here again. Let's see if I can do this. Um, so let's say I want to do an LPV approach. I'll shoot. I'll brief it for the LPV. Um, oh, this actually has two different RNFs. So you notice there's a Y right here. 
So if there's a Y, that means there's actually two different RNF approaches for this. The first one's going to be Z, and then it just counts backwards um, from there. So there's going to be Z, then Y, then X, or whatever. So that's what that's literally what that means. And again, uh, review that TPP to to because uh, that's where you're going to find all that information. But anyway, moving along here. Okay, so I'm shooting the RNAV uh, Y into uh, Atlanta today, runway 8 left. The final approach course is going to be 0, 9, or 5. Frequencies are set and verified. Uh, this radar, this approach does require radar, which we do have equipped in our aircraft. The final approach fix is going to be uh, Central, Set, Shell, Shell, whatever you say, whatever, however you pronounce that, Shell at 2,900 feet. Since I'm shooting the LPV approach today, my minimum is going to be 1,215 feet uh, with a half mile statute visibility. Missile approach instruction is going to be advised by ATC or as published. Um, if I do have to go miss, then I'm going to climb, maintain runway heading to 1,500 feet. Once I'm at that altitude, then I'm going to turn left to 3,500 feet and I'm going to hold over Troy's. Uh, so where's Troy's at? So, so there's Troy's. So here I am right here. I'm going to go miss climb 1500 feet and then I'm going to turn left th uh, 3500 feet and then I'm going to hold over Troy's right here and it looks like I'm going to be doing a teardrop uh, entry and that's how I'm going to hold over Troy's. Uh, lastly I do want to go over this right here so VGSI and RNAV this is another question that I get asked a lot um, so the, vi the uh, visual glide slope indicator in the RNAV glide path um, sometimes it say VGSI and the localizer glide path are not coincident. So what that means is uh, the VGSI is your pappies, your VASI, your light. So what this is, is let's say you're in the clouds and you're on your glide slope. All you have is your instrumentation in front of you because you can't see the, pa the pappies. You can't see the visual glide slope indicators yet because you're in the clouds. But let's say you are right on your glide slope and then you bust out of the clouds and then you see the, the pappies and the pappies are all red well that's this right here is telling you hey expect that because they are not coincident okay so instrument pilots this wraps up session number seven for the approach plates i hope this helped you again if you feel like i missed anything just put them in the comments below and i'll go and answer any questions that you have so hopefully this helped you in reading approach plates briefing the approach plates knowing the difference between a Precision approaches versus non-precision approaches, MDA and DA and all that and all that jazz. Um, again, go back to 91175. Go back to your terminal procedures publication. Go to the FAA TPP guide. That really will help you. The next episode is going to be over ODP, SIDS, and stars. And so be looking out for that in session number eight. But in the meantime, as always, keep flying, keep learning, and always have fun. I'll see you guys in the next session.